folks, Justin here. We're going to hop on the ladder with our Fantastic Fours mid-range Crusader list. It, uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's a good night. Uh, Sanders out of the house, so I made myself some chili. I uh, dumped in a bunch of garlic and onions and peppers, and I'm all alone here for a little while, so I decided that uh, what better way to spend my night than recording some videos and goofing around. It looks like I accidentally queued into casual, which is unfortunate, because that is not what we're trying to do with our life. But we'll go with it. We'll roll with it. <laughs> Maybe we'll see something interesting in casual. You never know. Alright, got our Underworld Vigilante, one of our new cards. Charge 4-1. Summon all enemy creatures in this lane. Lose cover. Hello. Greetings. So no turn one with the ring play says to me um, Swindler's Market deck. I don't have a very good turn three play. Um, it's one that I will I fall, probably play. So we've got Shadow Shift maybe. Okay. Let's go ahead and play it this turn. Uh, staying, ahead uh, staying ahead of him in life though is always pleasure. And to avoid charge creatures, I'll drop this dude over here. Hopefully clear out another uh, guard so we can get Reed, Reeve down unmolested. Stands with me. Okay. And yeah, then we're just going to hope for no prophecy here. You know, because we have the Golden Saint in hand, we, uh, you know, we're certainly incentivized to be the beat down here, at least in the beginning. Uh, now, the problem is, is against Archer, they're running a lot of high quality... Uh, um, a lot of high quality prophecy cards potentially so that can be a little risky but it actually looks like we're playing goblins which is the kind of thing I'm glad to see I love <laughs> being able to come into uh, into casual and see these sorts of things I don't think it's time to drop down vigilante uh, I mean I'm going to lose the tier if I play him here right I better like tier than home. reeve though I know we're just slapping lore in the face by having these two hang out next to each other, but there's a reason the deck's called Fantastic Fours, right? Because there's a high quality, high caliber of uh, legendary creatures in the four drop slot. Okay. Am I recording? I am recording. Okay. Perhaps mistakenly, since I didn't mean to get into casual in the first place, but here we are, so. This guy does have the Dragon Slayer title, which is pretty cool. Um. Wow. This guy's goblins are definitely connecting. Um. Well, that's just like the greatest draw in the world, right? No matter what. I think that actually is legitimately the best draw in the deck, right there. And now we got 12 on board, and our opponent's gonna concede. Okay. So let's actually hop onto the ladder and um, do what we, uh, <laughs> we're planning on doing. By the way, I love the fact Golden Saint is a Daedra. I accidentally selected that quest the other day, the first time I've ever had it. The phrase is funny. Um, and I've only been, <laughs> only been completing it by summoning random Daedra, and the only random Daedra I know of are the Golden Saints. Uh, of course those of you who are familiar with Supreme Atromancer know that it summons two Daedra when you play it. I think Atronox are Daedra. I don't know, my lore is all messed up. So we're playing against What's Up Fu, the Daedric Master, so maybe this guy will help me along my quest here. Uh, another Archer, probably not Goblin Archer, but it might be. Um, Ravenous Hunger is so bad against Archer that we're going to toss it back, especially since we already have a 2-drop. Especially with Curse Archer being the new hotness Archer. Um, if it's not already running Curse because it's a Swindler's Market deck. It was bad enough when that deck just ran Skaven Pyromancer. And, uh... Oh, what's the other card? Um... Murkwater Witch. But, yeah. Having that on top of it is not... Not necessary for my, uh, For my mental health. So it was up foo. Doesn't look like a turn one Angolum, which is good. Means we can avoid turn two uh, assassin into assassin into assassin. 
Alright, this looks pretty good. Mm. In most circumstances, that creature would go into the field lane. But against Archer, I like to start my Rift Thanes off into the shadow lane. If I fall, they That's fine. Again, with the Golden Saint in hand, just like last time, we just want to stay ahead in life. Uh, I would consider beefing that up to swing if I didn't have the Cloud Illusionist in hand to mean that I can swing into a guard creature here next turn. Just give me a name. Okay, which isn't going to be the case here, it looks like. But we do get to develop the Black Dragon. Immediate Prophecy Punishment, unfortunate. If I fall, they Oof. Okay, so on the one hand, and I shall cure it. this guy's literally born <laughs> to destroy this. On the other hand, I mean, it's a real bummer for us. Any guard creature he lays down, we're going to cloud us illusionist, I think, just to avoid the damage here so that we don't get our black dragon executed. It's I don't know if he knows this is immune to lethal. I'm um, executed leaf lurker, is what I mean. Okay, so now we actually have a different plan that we have to do. Oh man, this is gonna hurt. So I'm going to uh, Underworld Vigilante and Black Dragon to remove all these from his deck. <laughs> oh, that was that was pretty satisfying. All right, so I mean, yeah, we still got this over here, uh, and we're gonna probably get Pyromancer over here. We might actually—it's still, I would say, 50/50 on us winning this game, but. That was really satisfying. Um, taking out, I assume one of the primary pieces of his deck has to be pretty, pretty good, right? Okay, that's that's totally understandable. You got it, man. At least he's not gonna get the uh, generation off that thing. Um, I don't really have any great plays. I think I'm just going to do this. So just sort of pass the time. It's possible that we're not going to actually get a trigger Golden Saint next turn. But I kind of want to get a rune broken. A three drop in hand with the Earthbone Spinner to nail that. I mean, it's not a great play, but it is a play that we can make. Bottom line is that I might have just gotten too greedy with the... Uh, Black Dragon on the um, Markarth Bannerman. Okay. Just give me a name. Okay. Well, the forest will not suffer your presence. So that's just a setup for Golden Saint in the future. If he spends his contract, he breaks a rune. Pyromancer is a great draw. If he has Curse in hand, I mean, I'm going to be sad. He's got Mundestone. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, if we get one of our two belligerent giants, like we're sacri we're destroying the Swindler's Market. So. Skaven, no. Earth, no, camel. Okay. Camel with guard. Let's see what he discards here. A goblin skull, a merchant's camel. So you probably kept... What did you keep? My guess would be you kept a swimbush market. Oh, and there's the pyromancer. So we're the beatdown. We have eight magic next turn. You know what I like? Let's heat things up. A little distraction might prove useful. The day is mine. This is to avoid the camel killing <laughs> my hunger. And another prophecy. So, uh, I think we executed that turn perfectly, but my arrow shall fly through. <laughs> Sharp shooter scout. Card of champions. All right. Well, we'll get our uh, golden saint down probably next turn. There's that. If he has a uh, Smuggler's Hall in hand, we, we could be in for some hurt. Um, 
either one of our giants would be great draws. Just really phenomenal draws. So he's got to be digging for his smuggler's haul. I think that's what that card is called. So he pitches, a camel, and a sharpshooter scout. That was pretty quick too, so we actually are probably in quite a bit of trouble here. Um, yeah, it's going to get eaten, but... Behold my power. I'll kill you Do we want to give him another card? I think no. I'll kill you where you stand. Alright, so we might just be dead, because that's how this deck works. <laughs> and there's the hall. Um, you know, some prophecies could uh, do a world of, of help here. Um... You know, if he can't go all the way with a kill, we could top deck two underworld vigilant vigilantes. Okay, so you swing your your dude in. He's got to cast some of these spells to not die. And he doesn't know about our gatekeeper in hand. But he's running a lot of prophecies too, so. Okay. To fight. There's a firebrand. There's a giant, but a little late for that. Hard to argue with these draws. Prophecy again could save us. We didn't get it. So can we clear out his board? Oh, what a frustrating deck. Um, so we can bounce that. None of those creatures have breakthrough, unfortunately. Um, so let's say we get we lose two dam four damage. So we got four, eight, twelve is all we can do. I don't think there's any way we win. Um. How many zero cost cards did he play last turn? One, two, three, four, five. So if that doesn't cost zero and doesn't have charge, we might be able to stick this out. Let's heat things up. I think this is the only way we don't die. Alright, I guess we're about to find out. Top deck smugglers cat smugglers hall. We stand united. Looking for that charge. Guard, guard. If I fall, the hist will replay me. Okay. So we need to clear his board, which we cannot do because we can't get rid of this. We have one guard creature. We also don't want him to break any runes. There's a plan. There's always a plan. We'll hold, no matter what. I'll kill you where you stand. There's a plan. There's always a plan. They will not get past me. Okay, that seems that seems pretty safe. Again, a cash might be able to kill us again. But. I have no fear of you, cowardly. Well, this raider will not though. So we can actually, we can actually just kill him. Wow. 
like this. Awesome. So I think we navigated that pretty much perfectly. You know, I've been getting some feedback. Some people really enjoying this list. Some people are struggling with it. Um, I'm trying to think of some just general tips for it. Hey, look at all them Daedra we summoned. I think that it, it uh, it's not a straightforward list. It's running a lot of like cards that don't have particularly fancy tricks to them. But I think that the reason the deck works is because you're not running any low power cards. You're not running any cards that are bad in... I'll take that back. Uh, Ravenous Hunger is bad in a couple matchups. Just bad. The trade-off is, is that with the list set up the way it is, um, aggro decks are basically a buy, like an automatic win, right? And you suffer for that a little bit, but what I like about it is after you get really familiar with tools like Morkel Gatekeeper, Skaven Pyromancer, Cloudrus Illusionist, Earthbone Spinner, as uh, f you know, as really flexible cards and not just cards there to smash down on aggro, um, you can really exact some pretty serious power from the list. Um, yeah, the deck's also full. Of, I mean, has a lot of guard creatures which can uh, allow you. I mean, can be used uh, offensively, you know, to keep your own creatures alive. Like hiding a four-one or a four-two behind a guard is a pretty common occurrence in this deck, and one that I really appreciate the uh, the subtlety of the nuance of. And it this the bottom line is this deck does my favorite thing, which is playing for control of the board. Like I love slugging it out, you know. So. Anyway, that's that. I hope you guys had a good time watching. I had a good time playing. Sorry about the game on casual mode, but I was recording uh, yesterday on casual mode, so that is a wrap. See you on the ladder. Bye-bye.